um, let's start. Uh, so in the previous class, uh, we continued our discussion on maximum likelihood and maximum a posteriori probability estimation. Uh, we saw that if the related distributions py given x and p of x are log concave, then basically ML estimation or map estimation corresponds to solving a convex optimization problem because the associated log likelihood functions are uh, concave. Right? And we saw some examples, uh, particularly linear measurements with different types of IID noise, uh, Gaussian, Laplace, and uh, uniform distributions. And so, so that was for the case of ML estimation. But even if we have a map estimation problem, then the it's then the then the function to maximize is no longer just the log likelihood function, but it is log p of y given x plus log p of x. And if p of x is also log concave, uh, then log p of y given x plus log p of x. Uh, it's, it's so this is a sum of two concave functions. And as we saw in the previous class, the sum of two convex functions is also convex. And similarly, the sum of two concave functions is also concave. So, so, so in this case, even the map estimation problem also reduces to a convex optimization problem. Okay. So in, in, with this example, we saw that the sum of two convex functions is convex. But this holds true more generally. Uh, any non-negative linear combination of two or multiple convex functions is also a convex function. This can be generalized even further. In fact, suppose we have a function f of so suppose we have a function where I have two arguments f x and y so we have f of x comma y where where this this function is a convex function of x for every single y Then the corresponding, if I take the integral over all possible y of f of x comma y dy, this is also convex. All right. the, the proof is essentially identical to what we saw for conic combinations of convex functions. Uh, so this is a generalization. So it's not just uh, conic combinations, but, but even integrals for that matter. I can also potentially multiply this by some non-negative function of y, and the resulting integral would also be uh, a, a convex function. Okay. So we also looked at some transformations of convex functions. Right? Suppose we have uh, some function which can be expressed as g of h of x, then if g and h satisfy certain properties, then the resulting uh, function f is also convex. So f is g of h of x. So in particular, if g is convex and non-decreasing and h is convex, then f is convex. If g is convex and non-increasing and h is concave, then the resulting f is convex and so on. So you, you have so certain convexity and concavity properties of G and H also translate to convexity or concavity properties of F. Right? And this, this can be useful uh, in many scenarios. We'll, we'll see some more examples. We saw a few examples in the previous class, but, uh, but we'll see, before we see some more examples, we'll see some more transformations of convex functions which result in convex functions. So let's take, suppose we have two functions, f1 and f2, both of which are convex. Okay. 
f1 of x and f2 of x are convex. What can we say about f of x, which is the maximum, the point-wise maximum of f1 of x and f2 of x? Is this function also convex? Right, let's to, to visually see an example. Suppose you have some f1 of x and another f2 of x. So this is my f1, this is my f2. The maximum, the point-wise maximum would be the following function. So, this. so up to this point, f1 is the larger of f1 and f2. But from this point onwards, f2 is greater than f1. And from this point onwards, f1 is the larger. This is max of f1, f2. So at least from this example, it appears that the max of f1 and f2 is also a convex function. But is this true in general? Or is it possible to construct a function? Is it possible to construct f1 and f2 for which the maximum is not, not convex? Yes, any guesses? that starts from beyond the center of the first angle. Beyond the center, okay. So basically you have some, so this is your F1. Uh, is, you're talking about this, your F2. This is still convex, right? Okay, so the claim is that this is always convex. And this is sometimes useful in solving convex optimization problems. Suppose you have two utility functions and you want the maximum of those two functions. You want to maximize the maximum of those two functions. Then the resulting optimization problem is also a convex optimization problem. Right? So a double maximum is also a convex optimization. Okay. So, all right. So, so now let's see why this is true. Let's basically just use the definition of convexity right let's take f of theta yes you have a question which one so it's the so we're assuming that both f1 and f2 have the same domain so the maximum so f would also have the same domain as f1 and f2 so whenever i'm not specify explicitly specifying the domain of of a particular function we'll assume that it is rn and even otherwise, we can always think of f as the extended value function. So even if it is defined only in a certain domain, I can always look at the extended value function where uh, within the domain, it's the value of the function itself, but outside the domain, it takes the value plus infinity. So then I can simply assume that my domain is always Rn. Any other questions? Okay, so let's look at f of theta x1 plus 1 minus theta x2. Right, this is just the maximum of f1 of theta x1 plus 1 minus theta x2, f2 of theta x1 plus 1 minus theta x2. Okay. I know that each of f1 and f2 are convex. 
right? So f1 of theta x1 plus 1 minus theta x2 is less than or equal to theta f1 of x1 plus 1 minus theta f1 of x2 and the same for f2 as well, correct? And since I'm looking at the maximum, I'm replacing each of these functions by something which is larger, right? I'm, so if f1 is less than or equal to g1 and f2 is less than or equal to g2, then the maximum of f1 and f2 is less than or equal to the maximum of g1 and g2. So let's use that property. So this is less than or equal to the maximum of theta times f1 of x1 plus 1 minus theta times f1 of x2 and theta times f2 of x1 plus 1 minus theta times f2 of x2. And this is true because each of these functions is less than the corresponding one below. What can we do next? Okay, let's do that. So this is less than or equal to so if i have uh f1 so this is my g1 and this is my g2 like, or, or in other words i can write this as this is less than or equal to the maximum of theta f1 of x1 theta f2 of x1 plus the maximum of 1 minus theta f1 of x2 plus 1, sorry, comma, one minus theta f2 of x2. Do you agree? Okay, but maximum of theta f1 of x1, theta f2 of x2 is the same as theta times the maximum of f1 and f2. This theta times max of f1 of x1, f2 of x1 plus 1 minus theta times the maximum of f2 of x1 and f2 of x2. This is simply theta times. Sorry? F1 of x2. Straightforward. Again, done nothing else except just use basic properties of complex. So this holds more generally if we have in case we have some f of x comma y which is convex in x so there's a convex function of x for each y then let me call this f bar of x which is the supremum of f of x comma y so the supremum is taken over all y this is also convex in fact i can take the supremum over any set
Som et. All I need is a property that for every single y, x f of x comma y is a convex function of x. Okay. Okay. Like, 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 okay. So in particular, if, if the maximum exists, if you're doing it over a closed set, then the supremum will be equal to the maximum. So A can be any set. A can be any set. Yeah. Okay, so let's see some examples. So here's a non-trivial example. Let's suppose that we're looking at uh, this, the following set. So it's a function over the set of all symmetric matrices. And the function is the largest eigenvalue of the matrix. So, so in fact, let me take this to be the set of all positive semi-definite matrices. Okay. How do I use the properties that I've seen so far? Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Can we use something else? So, in fact, I claim that just this property is enough. The that the supremum overall. So, if I take f of x comma y, where f of x comma y is convex for every single y, then the supremum is also a convex. Can I express the largest eigenvalue of A as the supremum of some function? okay so what do we know so i'm saying that a is in fact would be positive semi-definite but it need not be you can even say take this to be the set of all symmetric matrices what do you know about symmetric matrices what are the eigen what can you say about the eigenvalues of symmetric yeah, yeah the real they're all real they're guaranteed to be real uh so Dynamize it in that case, you can see that okay. it will be the maybe the supremum of the unit of the lambda max times the unit vector or lambda and the unit vector after that. Um, lambda max times the unit vector. Magnitude of all the vectors. Supremum of all the solutions to that. So we want okay. we basically want a function j such that. It's G of A, X. Correct. Uh, where the function X transpose A, X, Y, and what X. Okay. The supremum of that function. Yeah. So, in fact, that's one way to put it. But you can put a con instead put a constraint on. Uh, okay. So the way you are saying is that this is equal to the supremum or the largest eigenvalue is equal to the supremum overall X in R n of x transpose ax divided by 
norm x square, right? Okay. Is this function common? There's a simpler solution, which is very close to this. Remember that I don't have to take the supremum over all possible y. I can choose any subset of y. So, okay, but before we go to that, do you agree that the largest eigenvalue is equal to this supremum? Yeah? Yes or no? Correct. It could be a sum of eigenvalues, true, but but then can it be any larger than the largest eigen? Okay. So let's let's put this. So look, look at this more carefully. Uh, let's take any vector x. So what all properties do we know about symmetric matrix? First, they have real eigenvalues. What else do we know? Yeah? What x No, I, I agree. We're getting to that. But, uh, but to show that, what other properties do we know about symmetric matrix? Uh, the, the eigenvector, you can always choose an orthonormal eigenbase. Okay. So, so let me do that. So I can write any vector x in terms of as a linear combination of the eigenvectors, which are all orthogonal to each other. Right. So I can write this as uh, whatever x. Let's say alpha 1 u1 plus alpha 2 u2 plus alpha n un. Okay. And let's assume that u1 corresponds to uh, the eigenvector. So uh, the eigenvector corresponding to the largest eigenvalue. Okay. So Right, and we'll assume that this corresponds to the largest again vector. Let's further assume that X has unit norm. Now, what can you say about x transpose ax? What would this be equal to? Remember, the u1, u2, and so on, they're all orthogonal to each other. At the same time, they're eigenvectors of a. No, even otherwise. At this point, I don't need need that. But what is x transpose a x going to be? Equal? Alpha, 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 alpha. Sorry, alpha one. Alpha one square. Yes, so it's going to be alpha one square times lambda one plus alpha two square times lambda two, so on plus alpha n square times lambda n right uh, so and now let's assume that x is a unit vector is a unit vector uh, 
then what can you say about alpha 1 square plus alpha 2 square plus so on up to alpha n square? Sorry? True. So, the UIs are all unit vectors, but in addition, x is also unit vector. So, which implies that the sum of the alpha i square should be equal to 1. Right? Because the norm of x would just be alpha 1 square plus alpha 2 square, so on up to alpha n square. So then when would this be the largest? When alpha 1 square, so you can treat these as whatever beta 1, beta 2 up to beta n, alpha 1 square is equal to beta 1, alpha 2 square equal to beta 2 and so on. So then it's just a convex combination of lambda 1, lambda 2 and so on up to lambda n. Right. The only way this can be the largest is if it puts all mass on the largest eigenvalue. Right. So, so this, the, so the largest eigenvalue is equal to the supremum for all x in R n such that norm x is equal to one of x transpose ax okay now i can't claim that this function is convex so i'll in it's but but this is going to be convex as long as a is positive centimeter right so so this for so for each x x transpose ax is convex and I can write the largest eigenvalue as the supremum over all possible x subject to some constraints. It doesn't matter what those constraints are. So this is complex. Right. Any questions? Sorry, A is positive semi definite. So, where the, the domain is of F is the set of all positive semi definite matrices. What is the second derivative test for convexity? Second, the, the, the Hessian of this is simply A. And A is positive semi definite, so this is called. So, in that case, yeah, uh, in that specific case, that is over uh, like small x, right? Over all x, yeah. In that specific case, but in this case, isn't it a function of A? It's so, just linear. No, 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 no. So there are two things, right? Uh, okay, you are right. So, so it's a linear function of A, but a convex function of X. Uh, so for every X, I can even choose uh, the domain to be the set of all symmetric matrices. So this would be, so X transpose AX, is a linear tense convex function of H. So 
So for a fixed x, for every single x, x transpose ax is a linear function of a, and therefore it's a convex function of a. So it's a convex function in x only if a is positive semi-definite. So let's look at a different function. Suppose I choose f to be, so let's say that f1, f2, f3 are convex functions. The maximum of the pointwise maximum of f1, f2, f3 is also guaranteed to be a convex function. What about the second largest one? Let me just define this. S L of X to be the second largest of F one of X, F two of X, and F three of X. Is this going to be a convex function? Why not? Okay, can you explain the example? So you have x minus 1 the whole square and x plus 1 the whole square. Okay, so what will this look like? So it's it looks something like this, right? And the third function will be the Yeah, we could potentially even take x equal well x equal to, uh, zero function for it. So what would the second largest you can take a third function? Right? So what would be the second largest? It would be this particular function. This is not called. Okay, so let f of x be the sum of the k largest components of the vector x. Let's say the two largest components of x. Is this going to be a convex function? Okay. 
Is this public? So you need to use multiple property that you've seen so far. Why? So we can decompose this as the uh, we can decompose x as the uh, k largest elements of x and some other vector say y the other part of x becomes y. So the k largest component of x becomes say x bar. Okay. So that vector. Okay. And the rest of it becomes some y vector, for example. Okay. And uh, then we can prove it for uh, the k largest elements. We can prove that will be convex using the one definition of convexity. Are you sure that the k large? We just saw that the second largest component of x is not a convex. Yeah, but uh, for the k largest, I think uh, when we theta will come out common, uh, so we'll have to write it down. Yeah, theta will come out common in that case. We want to write this as let's say g of x is basically let's take the first two largest components. So it is x. One. So x within these brackets one denotes the largest component and x2 denotes the second largest component. Right? So it's a function from Rn to R2. So if you look at each component, right? So this is G1 and this is G2. G1 is convex. G2 is not convex because we just saw that. Right? So G2 is not a convex. Swap what? Would be in say x one and x two. Okay. So not not only from x one, some two different x x y. Okay. X y value. Okay. In that case, when we take the convex combination, but which two are you going to? Oh, no, any of the values of x vector, not this x one value. Okay. The general x vector. Okay. We take the convex combination of uh, g of x one and g of x two. But x one x one uh, those not this. So what is g? Yeah. The top two components of x. The top again. Okay, so this is not a convex form. Right. That's the point. Is there something else we can? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, very good. Yep. So I'll define an F I1, I2. Let's look at the first two largest components. The first and the second largest, some of the first and second largest components of X. So for any I1, I2, I1 not equal to I2, I'll define f i1 i2 of x to be x i1 plus x i2. The i1 component plus the i2 component of x. Okay. Now, can you express f of x in terms of f i1 i2 of x? Yeah, so this is now f of x is equal to the maximum overall i1 i2 
such that i1 is not equal to i2 of f i1 i2 of x do you agree what about this function is it always convex for every i1 i2 it's a linear function right so it's always convex So, so this, and you're you are expressing this as a maximum of convex function. So this is always a convex. Right. So is there any way to prove it by? Um, how would you prove it by induction? I'm not sure. Like, assuming that T minus one for it, T minus one is convex. One more element. That would still be hard, right? Because you'll be adding the second largest component. That is not complex. So you can't guarantee that. I'm not sure. You wanted to ask something? I have a Okay. Any other questions? So, I'm saying that doing a combination of one convex function and another non convex function will be correct? No, right? That may not be the case. It's not true in general. Second largest, we just saw that it is not. No, this is not first largest and second largest, right? For any i1, i2, you fix two components. I'm not saying that it's the largest component and the second largest yeah. component. So, for example, if if I have, if f is, sorry, uh, if, if n is equal to 3, then f12 of x is simply the sum of the first component and the second component. f23 of x is the sum of the second component and the third component, not the second largest and the third largest. f13 of x is x1 plus x3. So the sum of the two largest components is simply the maximum of these three functions. Each of these functions is linear. Right? You agree with that? So in some sense, it's still maximum and a sum, but then the order in which you take that is no different. So in specific case, there's only, there's only works when the function we're trying to maximize is maximized as a complex. Like if I change it to f of x is ratio of the two largest components of x, then the ratio, but the ratio is not the convex. Yeah, that's what I mean. So, so like, correct. But then yeah, so, I, so, this, so I'm using two properties over here. One that the sum is convex. Okay, so in fact, three properties. One that the sum is convex, the property of convexity of linear transformations. I'm using the fact that the maximum of convex functions is convex. And I'm also using a third property, which is the composition theorem. Right. So, so this is a maximum of a sum. Right. The sum is convex. Fine. It depends. Yeah. You can write it. Yes. True. True. So, in fact, I can generalize this a bit further. Instead of looking at the k largest components, I can even look at functions g1, g2, g3, and so on. And uh, the sum of the two largest functions is also going to be convex if each of the gi's is also convex. So, you can get different variations of this just by taking multiple properties and composing them. This problem is not related to the second largest not being convex. Are they related? In a way, it is related because 
because remember we could express the sum of the two largest components as the sum of the first largest component plus the plus the second largest component right but we know that the second largest component is not a convex function right but the sum of the two largest components is a convex function But how we are using these properties also matter. I couldn't first argue that the sum of the if, if the first largest component and the second largest components were both convex, hypothetically speaking, if I have some G1 and G2, then the sum of those two would also be convex. But I can't use the properties in that particular order. I'm writing this a bit differently in the sum of all possible combinations of two components and taking the maximum over that. So the, the point that I'm trying to make is that you have to be a little clever in, in using these different properties. Any other questions? Okay, so we, we've seen that the maximum of the supremum is convex. What about the minimum of convex function? Is that going to be convex? Okay. So, Correct. So, so the minimum of two functions is not always is not guaranteed to be convex, right? Uh, but on the other hand, it depends on how you define. Let's wait for the power to be back. Okay, so maybe by the time we wait for the power to be back, let's have a quick quiz. <laughs> Uh, I have paper, so you don't have to share the sheets.
Yeah, any question? The first, so you have to say whether the following function is convex or concave or neither convex or concave. The first function is e to the minus x squared. The second function is the two norm functions. You just have to answer. Yeah. yeah. No proof. Not needed. Okay. Then say justify. You just don't answer, that's it. Are you all done? Give one more minute. Okay, so time to hand in your
So, what are the answers? The first one, neither convex nor concave. Second one, convex. Why is the second one convex? Can you strive any quality? So we saw that if you take two functions which are convex, if you take the minimum of two functions which are convex, then the resulting minimum, the pointwise minimum need not necessarily be convex. But on the other hand, there are situations where the infimum of convex functions is convex. So Let's say that f of x comma y is convex jointly in x and y. Okay. Is is convex in the pair x comma. Y. then the infimum of f of x comma y where the infimum is taken over any convex set this is also convex The yeah. So the previous example, can you express it as <coughs> jointly convex? You trivially write it as mm. so you have this, right? So how do you express this as f of x comma y? f of x plus 0 into y it's not so for example you could say you can call this as f of x plus y the whole square 
f of x comma y is x plus y the whole square. X plus y the whole square. Right? That's one way to put it. Right? And you're minimizing over all possible y in minus one comma one. This example, you can write f of x comma y as x plus y the whole square. Is this convex jointly in x comma y? It is, right? You can write the minimum of this, minimum of these two. So my g of x, I can write this as the minimum of f of x comma y, y taken from plus 1 and minus 1. Correct? But is this c convex? It's not. So all of these properties have to be fulfilled. So f of x comma y should be jointly convex in x comma y and you should take the infimum or the minimum over a convex set. If we were using y as a pointer to so, like, we just take more right. Just say f of x comma y is x minus one square plus. Okay. Would you write it? Okay, it's a function, it's a it's convex in the argument x comma y. So you have the ve vector x, vector y. If you concatenate the two, you get a vector in, let's say, so if x is in Rn, yeah, so if x is in Rn and y is in Rm, then f is basically a map from R n plus m to R. Basically, it's, it's some function from Rn plus M to R. I'm separating out some of those variables, the first N variables and the last M variables uh, as X and Y. That's it. Yeah. So, coming back to the previous example, I claim that it's not possible to write it in this particular form. As the infimum of f of x comma y, where y is taken over a convex uh, set. So if you choose somehow are able to choose y to be taken from some convex set, then this the resulting f of x comma y would not be convex in x comma y. It would be convex separately in x, but not convex in x comma y. Because the y is just taken as a discrete Yeah, because the set that you're minimizing over is just no, contains no. plus one and minus one. It's not a convex. It's not a convex. Right? But on the other hand, if you took, suppose I took Anything f of x. So let's take f of x comma y equal to x plus y the whole square. And suppose I take the infimum. Let me rewrite this. Say f of x comma y is x plus y the whole square, right? And g of x is the infimum over all y taken over uh, minus 1 to plus 1 of yeah, f of x comma y. What would be this be equal to? X is minus one because Yeah. Correct. So it's basically you have this minus one. Taking the x axis. This is plus one. So the infimum would so for any y greater than minus 1, 
the corresponding f of x comma y would lie to the right of this and for any y less than plus 1 the resulting curve would lie to the left of the right curve so the infimum would basically be for x less than minus 1 this would be x minus 1 the whole square x less than minus 1 sorry for oh sorry x plus 1 the whole square for x less than minus 1 uh, it would be x minus 1 the whole square for x greater than plus 1 I'll be 0 for x in the range minus 1 to plus 1 so the corresponding curve would look something like this and this function is constant For what equality? X is equal to zero. Fine, it's zero. Oh, sorry. Uh, I should I should have said whatever. I can say less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or x equal to zero. It's zero. <laughs> sorry. Question. No, x, right? It's a function of x. Correct, x plus y the whole square. But g of x is the infimum overall y in minus 1 to plus 1 of f of x comma y. Right? So the y is taken out. So, so in fact, for x less than or equal to minus 1, the minimum is achieved for y equal to plus 1. For x greater than or equal to plus 1, the infimum is achieved for y equal to minus 1. For any point in between, it's achieved by a different. It's in fact, achieved by y equal to minus x. Any question? This was a simple example, but you can construct more non-trivial examples. So suppose that C is a convex set. the following function of x which is the minimum distance or the distance between x and c this function is convex So this is simply equal to the norm of x minus y, the distance between x and y for the point that is closest to x. Of norm of x minus y. It need not be convex for x to the power. Sorry, what need not be convex? C need not be convex for it. So I'm saying that C is a convex. It has to be a convex. Yes. 
which in this example it's not necessary in which example this particular right in this instance it is a question but is it necessary okay so let's take a simple example where c is just consists of two points okay so let's take uh f of take uh, c to just be say 1 and minus 1 okay uh, and x taken in r what would the function look like so x this is minus 1 this is plus 1 so for x less than minus 1, it's basically linear, right? For x greater than plus 1, it's linear. But in between, so this function is not convex. Right? So if c is not convex, then f of x need not be convex. It is convex. Uh, you could construct. This is the thing But that's convex set, right? Yeah. No, you want a non convex set C for which the minimum distance is convex. We take all the rational points. Um, we take all. Well, <laughs> fine. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, it keeps jumping. Yes. Um, okay. My guess is that it's non convex if C is not convex. Uh, I'm sorry. What if you take y to be some distribution? Okay, and you mean a set of distributions? Yeah. Sure. And we take we take the we take the distribution function to be not the Euclidean distribution for from the diverging from J diverging. Okay, the 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 divergence should be a convex function. No. Only it has to be a convex divergence function. I can say the infinitum of the norm will be zero. So basically, what I'm thinking is you take a circle, but you don't take the center. Okay. That is not a not a function. It is, yeah, sure. The center point. It's zero. The infinitum is zero. Yeah. Given the rational case, if you're just talking, it's zero. Yeah. Sure, but if you, if you assume that it's a connected set, for example, then I'm guessing that it, it's going to be non convex. Yeah, there are these examples, pathological examples that you can construct, but otherwise, I think it's going to be non convex if the set is. Is a connected non convex set. Okay, so coming back, uh, yeah, so if, if you have a convex divergence function, then and C is a convex set, then it's this is also going to be uh, so, so the minimum distance or the minimum divergence. Is, is is also going to be a convex. C is a set of distribution. In that case, C is not convex. C could be a you could choose a set of distributions. It's not necessarily be it will be convex. Right? The set of distribution that we choose it may not be convex, but C the distance will always be convex. So I'm assuming you're choosing a subset of distributions. Right? Yeah. If you take the set of all possible distributions, yeah, yeah. then the infimum will always be zero. Yeah. Okay. 
so that will be a convex so if you have yeah so px px bar the infimum overall let's say px bar in some set this is going to be a convex function of px that's it will, that, that will be the case assuming that this function d whatever it is it's a convex function that's the only property that we need Okay, so maybe let's stop here. Any questions?